Hello and welcome to episode 167 of my Worm Unlimited tutorial series. This episode will be on making and using a measuring jug. But first, say hello Rainstorm. Hi everyone, Rainstorm here. Okay, so we are going to be making a very cool item, an item we can use to measure all the liquids that are within worm. So not just cooking liquids, because this in actual fact, the measuring jug is of course a cooking tool. And as we've been doing tools in the last few episodes, um, we thought we'd carry on in that vein to steer us into cooking. Uh, so we thought that we would start covering some of the different tools that we're gonna need to make and use when we start cooking. And we thought the best item to start with, which was actually Rainstorm's idea, is the measuring jug. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing that I'd like to mention about the measuring jug, um, obviously it measures out these different liquids. The amounts that you can measure the liquids out are 1 gram, 2 gram, 5 grams, 10 grams, 20 grams, 50 grams, 100 grams, 200 grams, 500 grams, 1 kilogram, five kilograms and ten kilograms so you're going to see all of this once we actually use the measuring jug so how do we get a measuring jug because if you search uh, search for it in the recipe list it's not going to say me well in fact let's show you rather than say so let's bring up the recipe window and the recipe search and type in measuring jug You notice here it says pottery at the end, but it also says clay measuring jug. So let's wind wind in that if I can. Which oh, I don't think it'll let me. I won't know. Let's do this. There we go. Okay, so you'll notice it says clay measuring jug, and it's going to use the pottery skill. Uh, we're going to need to use our hand, so we're going to activate our hand, and we're going to need um, a zero point thirty lump of clay so let's do this now I'm going to do it the old school way so I'm just going to bring up my body open my inventory activate my hand by left clicking on it and you see up here it says activated and then just get a lump of clay so I'm using a big lump of clay two kilograms just right click create pottery and in this list will be clay measuring jug there it is so 76 percent if we look at my skills and my pottery which is there you see i'm on 35.64 what's your pottery at rainstorm a lot less <laughs> is it yeah i haven't been doing much pottery oh okay no i do enjoy pottery in actual fact and i must start working on that at some point so anyway a skill of 35 will give you a per percentage to create of 76 which is well, that's better than mine mine was only 45 oh was it yeah so so there you go that's a rough estimate of what you can expect at uh, what did you say 35 no mine was at 45 percent Oh, my 45. skill was only at 11. Oh, 11, right. <laughs> 0.53 or something like that. Yeah, so that gives you all an idea about um, how high you want to take your pottery skill as to what percentage in order to succeed. Well, we should do this first attempt, so let's try. Although, knowing worm, it could well fail. There you go, you see? That's what I'm talking about. You almost made it. So let's try it again. Notice that for every failure, you will use 0 0.03 uh, grams of clay for every fat time you fail. So just bear that in mind. But if you're using a 2 kilogram lump, it's only 0 0.30 you need. So we'll try again. And there we go. So I've created the clay measuring jug. Now, whatever you do, don't try using it, because obviously it's not going to work. You can't use it yet. You need to harden it. But before you harden it, 
you will want to, and thank you again to Rainstorm for mentioning this, before you harden it, you will want to improve it, imp it up as high as your pottery skill will allow you. So for that you will obviously need your pottery tools. Um, I don't even know if I've got any loaded. The clay scraper and... Oh here we are, I've got a few. The, the clay shaper. Your hands uh, and a spatula and water is another tool. So let's see, what can, what can we imp this up? So we need some clay, so that we have. Let's drop that in there. And then imp this up a bit. Just so you get the idea. Here we go, now it wants my hand. So let's do that. And now the clay shape up. Can you also show them how to make it with the recipe window so they see how the hand is? Oh yeah, okay. And spatula. And the shaper. Some more clay. Oh, and that'll do. Right, okay, so like Rainstorms just said, let's show you how to to make it with the recipe window. So we'll bring that back up. So clay measuring jug, we'll right click, add that to the crafting window, and you can see that you need the clay on the left and your hand on the right. And make sure you've selected the right item. Cool, look at all these lists of items that we can go through. Uh, the clay pie dish, that looks fun. Anyway, so there we go, 76% and we'll whack. Was your, was your hand already activated? Yeah. Could you activate something else and show them how to activate the hand in the recipe window? Okay. Uh, so, let's... I oh know the clay shaper was activated. Okay. Um, well, you see up in the left-hand corner of the... The recipe window, there's a little hand next to the box. Yeah, add hand. Yeah, that's how you add the hand to the recipe window. Why is it by the left box, though, when the hand's in the right box? Because you put something in the left box first. Uh, well, the game did, so the game put the clay in the left and put the hand in the right. Normally, it leaves the boxes empty because it knows it wants to throw it's, it's because you've already made something into confusion so you know what I'm going to probably do that in future so that that doesn't happen again that's great I've learned that then <laughs> so what I'm saying is you would have activated normally you would activate your hand and it would have popped in the left window then you would have put your other item in the right window so if you are had something in the left it's going to put it in the right Right, it's yeah. Empty. <laughs> Let, let's show that. So we click the hand, puts the hand there, grab the clay, pull it in there. Correct. There we go. <laughs> now normally that's how it would have been empty for me, so I'm so glad that uh, I've found a way in future now to make sure the windows are populated before I go into this dreaded recipe uh, window. Actually no, it's good, I like it. You want some cheese and crackers with that whiny? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Right, okay, so enough of the waffle. Let's get to the measuring jug, because we're still only on the clay one. So for that, now we need to open up our kiln, although obviously you can use a forge, and you can use any of the yeah. uh, campfire. Uh, yeah, so forge or campfire or oven, but the kiln will be the quickest. So let's open that. And let's throw in my clay measuring jug. Also, there is one over here, which Rainstorm made earlier. See, it looks quite cool, because it actually looks clayish still. But anyway, let's grab it, because Rainstorm made it earlier, and you can see she imped it up much higher than me. I don't know how she did that with just 11 in pottery, but there you go. It we let me. Did it? Yep. Well, I only did 1881, and mine is... Over but I was working on it for a while. I don't. That's what it was when I started. I don't know what it is now. Mine is treble your skill level. But anyway, so there we go. No sense to be made out of that. So 
So what I'm going to be doing? Oh, just using the higher quality. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. It's a good jug, and I'm going to keep that one. If you don't mind. No. So, there so, you go. so what I want to demonstrate next. Then, once this hardens, as you're going to see, you put it in your kiln. Make sure you've got enough fuel in it. What you want to see is the fire burn steadily and will burn for a long time. If you put at least a 20, 20 kilogram log in, you will get that. That will be for them for the maximum amount of time, dependent on the quality level of your heated device. Whether it be a forge, campfire, kiln, it all depends on your quality level of it as to how long it will take before it hardens. And then once it's hardened, then I want to show the different liquids, some of the different liquids that you can use to measure, and how, to, of course, to measure. It can be a little confusing, but we shall make it simple. Did you say you was going to sing a song while we're waiting for this to harden, oh, Rainstorm? no! <laughs> <laughs> I don't do any kind of singing, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, that spirit templar seems to think so, and he's running off. <laughs> I've been told I cackle like a chicken when I laugh, and that means I probably shouldn't be singing either. <laughs> I'm sure you're a good singer. No, no, no. So, let's see, how's this doing? It's, oh, it's glowing from heat, so that must be close. can't get any hotter than that so now it's just a case of waiting for it to harden. Cool. for how long have we been waiting for something like this to be introduced to worm? How, oh, how many years? Lots of years yep. because when we used to have to make, I don't remember was it lye or something, we had to put, put acorns. in a specific yeah, acorn into a small pottery jar, and you had to have so many acorn. Oh goodness! Man. We had to have a specific amount of water, and tr to try and figure out how to make a specific amount, we would use the small um, pottery vials. Is it a vial? What is this thing? The flask, and slowly keep adding water into the the buckets or the barrels and stuff until we got the right amount. It takes forever. I'm sure we must have shown that in a previous episode. I'm sure. No, 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 no. No, I no, did. No. I remember distinctly using acorns to measure out a certain amount of liquid. I think it was tannin or something that I did uh, previously. Yeah, mm. uh, so anyway, point being, now it's all changed because now we can be exact. In fact, we can now measure out an amount. Of liquid that um, would have been very very difficult to do before and I'm talking about 0 0.01 uh, gram which doesn't even show as a liquid when it's in the measuring jug as you're going to see in a minute so here we go the measuring jug is hardened now so how do we use it so what you need to do is you need to have the liquids that you want to measure out in your pocket along with the measuring jug. You've got to keep the measuring jug, jug empty in order to use it. So to demonstrate this, to use the measuring jug, let's say we want to be able to measure out uh, 0 0.01 grams of liquid. The first thing we have to do is right click on the measuring jug, go to set volume to, and then you can see here is a list of all the different volumes. So let's do a, uh, start with the smallest, which is one gram. You left click that. That has now set the amount that this uh, measuring jug will accept of liquid. So to demonstrate that, first of all, let's open up this, uh, let's take this barrel of water and open it up. And if I now, with the measuring jug activated, you have to then activate it after you've set the, the amount that you want. You right click on the chosen liquid and then left click fill. And guess what? It will fill to the exact amount 
that you've set it to. Now as you can see here, as I mentioned earlier, we have chosen an amount that you could have never have measured out before you had the measuring jug. Because as you can see, it's 0, 0, 0.0, 0, I said 0 0.1, but that's incorrect, that was for 10 grams. Uh, for 1 gram, it registers 0 0.0.0, 0 0.0.0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. God, I'm getting myself in the right old zeroed mess. Anyway, so as you can see, you could never measure that amount out before. Now you can with the measuring jug. Now, if I try to set, let's close that. If I try to set the, the limit on this now, set volume to, and if I try to set it to two grams, you'll see down here, you can only change volume when the measuring jug is empty. So bear that in mind. What you do, just drop the liquid back into the container, right click, this time let's set it to two grams. And this time we won't use water, this time we will use corn oil. Okay, so we right click on it, uh, there's 0 0.90 in there, so let's fill that. And again, because it's under 10 grams, it will not register on here. So how do you know then, if it's, let's say you've measured out an amount of liquid under 10 grams, how do you know exactly how many grams you have in there? Because it could be anything from one gram to nine grams, as denoted by the set volume. No, sorry, it can be anything from one gram, two gram, or five grams. So how do you know how many grams you've got in there? Well, it's simple. What you do, right click on the measuring jug and examine. And then you, you can see down here, you check the wheel on the bottom and it indicates the volume is set to two grams. So I know that if I fill that me measuring jug up, I'm gonna have two grams of liquid in that jug. So that's how you can tell when it's under 10 grams. But let's show you then what happens when it's when you set it to 10 grams. So put the liquid back in there. So that's what we'll do next. Next, we're gonna set the volume to 10 grams. And this time, so that's corn oil. Now we're gonna use some cow milk. So I'm gonna right click and fill. And here you can now see 0 0.01, so you know you've got 10 grams. Okay, so let's put that back. So here we've used corn oil, brown milk. Next, let's set this to 100 grams. And let's use some olive oil now. So we'll fill that up. And as you can see now, it's 0 0.10, 100 grams. Okay, so, and, and as you can see, you can measure out olive oil as well. Okay, next, let's set it to one kilogram. And this one, really, you've got cream? Where did you find that rainstorm? I made it. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay, well we do cream, why not? I've never worked with cream before. So we'll right click, fill up, and there you go, it even sounds like liquid. Um, and there's your one kilogram. And lastly, let's do the last one, which was the highest one, which is 10 kilograms. For that, I can't use, no, in fact, let's do, how much have I got? So I've got 4.6 kilograms, let's do two to demonstrate the line. Okay, so fill it up. And there you go, two kilograms of lye. And that also shows you that you can use all these different liquids. Okay, and the last one, set the volume to 10. We use the water, fill it up. Now you tell me, how cool is that? Anything else you'd like to add in good measure, Rainstorm? <laughs> I thought of something earlier, but it's just kind of gone out of my mind. 
Oh, don't be like that. No, come on. You know, you know, no. everyone wants to hear you come out with whatever it is you was going to say. No, I don't really remember. There was something I was going to say about it, and I just completely forgot. It was, it was something around the time you were talking about um, making sure it was imped before you fire it, because you do want to get it up as high as you can. Mm. And then that it'll last longer. Mm. Uh, it rots slower. My, Play items do take damage, so. Yeah. Um, no, I can't remember what it was. Well, in that case then, um, I think we've gone over everything we could possibly want to that would be good for man or beast. I don't think there's anything else I could possibly try and say about this. So, if you'd like to say your goodbyes, I'll say the outro. Bye everyone, have a great day. Thank you, Brainstorm, very much for preparing all them different buckets with all the different liquids and getting the kiln up and running and heated up and everything else that you've contributed to helping with this episode. And thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> um, wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep every last one of you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye. <laughs>